Okay, let's see how well this thing records. What is this? Wait a minute, I'm trying to... I'm not used to this phone. I don't know what that little thing is. How do I get rid of it? Alright. Hello? Hi! <laughs> I'm trying to record with my other cell phone on Android 9. Now, are we all ready now? Okay, hello. Am I recording now? Apparently. Okay. This is going to be one in a series called Arguments with God. The screen will stay relatively static. Right now you're looking at a leaf sheep, which is your quintessential proof that God exists. Because this leaf sheep lives at the bottom of the Sea of Japan. Who can see it? And why would it be so cute? Okay? It's cute. Look at this thing. Okay? Let me just see if I can get the... See how cute that is? That's adorable. All right? Not as adorable that way, but it's adorable. That's your proof of God staring you in the face. Okay, well, we all kind of already know from the get-go who God is. But we don't like what we know, or what we know upsets us, or confuses us, in some way it bothers us. That's your second big clue that God exists. Okay, that's why I'm titling this series Arguments with God, because from the get-go, your own soul has a love-hate relationship with the idea of God. Your own soul is your own proof that the God of the Bible is the real God. Because it's the same problem Adam had both before and after he sinned. It's the same problem the woman had both before and after she sinned. And you say, ah, oh, the Bible is just a bunch of fairy tales. No, your own soul is evidence that the, the text there is actual. Now, the Bible's a literary book, and it uses literary styles. Sometimes it's meant to be literal, and sometimes it's meant to be literary. And people get all confused about that, because the soul of each of us is confused about God. That's what we all have in common. Some of us call ourselves atheists. Some call ourselves Christians or Jews or Baha'i or whatever the hell we call ourselves. But we are all somewhat apoplectic, interested, scared, fearful, antagonistic about this whole God thing, whether we admit it or not. That's your second, besides the leaf sheep, that's your second big clue God exists. Your third big clue will last the rest of your life. Even in eternity. Because you don't die. You just leave this organic body. Unlike the leaf sheep, you have a soul. The leaf sheep does not know God. The leaf sheep only knows that it lives at the bottom of something that has lots of food, it's continually eating, and the food turns its little digestive leaves that you see there on the screen, that's part of its digestive system, turns them green. Okay? It does not know it's cute. It does not know who God is. All it knows is chomp. Chom, chom, chom. Nom, 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 That's what it knows. 
That's not what you know. What you know is very similar. Every day you get up, you wash your face, you take a cup of coffee or tea or milk, and you do something to your body to make it clean and wake up, and then you get dressed, and you usually go to work somewhere. Even if it's in the next room. That's your day. And after about four hours, you take a little break. And then you go back. And another four hours, you take another little break. And then you go back. And in the evening, you watch TV. And maybe you have sex with your spouse. And then you go shopping. And over and over and over and over. So how are you different from the leaf sheet? You're different because... You, at some point, will begin to wonder, why is your life like this? Over and over, you pee. Over and over, you eat. Over and over, you drive someplace. Over and over, you get groceries, you do your hair. You maybe go to a party, but even those get old. You always got to wash clothes. You always got to do the dishes. You always got to fix the tires or something on your car. Or if you don't have a car, something on your shoes. Over and over and over and over. How are you different from the leaf sheet? Seriously. This guy is probably dead now. Does not know anything. The difference is you do know. And you can't do a damn thing to get out of the rut of always going to sleep, always waking up, always getting a shower, always going to the bathroom, always having to work, or maybe you get a vacation for two weeks and you go to some crummy place that's not as good as advertised. Blah, 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 blah. So when you start hearing somebody say, God exists, ha! Sure, why would a God make a life like this? Good question. Why would a God make a leaf sheep? He's the only one who can see it. Why would he bother to make it cute? He's the only one who can see it. So why the hell did he make you? And why did he make you with a life with so much banal repetition? Meaninglessness. Get up, go to work, go to sleep. Have sex, okay, that's nice. For what, 30 minutes? Okay. And then it's back to the same old, same old. Day in, day out, day in, day out. For 70 or 80 freaking years. So if there's a God, why the hell do you make it like that? That's your first argument, isn't it? Your first proof of God is the leaf sheep. Your second proof of God is Adam. Because you have all the same love-hate details. Your third proof is you're arguing. You're living a meaningless blah, blah, life. And four, if God exists, then why did he make you like this? Those are good arguments. In fact, the argument, why did you make me like this, is Satan's argument. And that brings up why we are made like this. God is God. Satan is Satan. Far lower. Even though he's the highest creature God ever made. Per the Bible. Isaiah, what is it? 14 and Ezekiel 28. God just threw that at me. Forgot. Go look him up. Satan's ticked off just like you and I are. Why'd you make me like this? Why is our life so boring? So low. Ah. 
Those are good questions. Notice I am not criticizing Satan. Neither is God. They're good questions. Okay, so what are the answers? And we'll talk about that in the next increment. Now, how do I turn this thing off?